Will the Bengals take down the Saints and improve to three and three on the season? Ross Jackson of Locked On Saints is here for our weekly crossover as we talk all things Bengals Saints on another crossover edition of Locked On Bengals. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on? And I guess I'll say it this way. Who dat and who day to Bengals fans and Saints fans. A little bit of parody for you. Appreciate you very much for being here for this crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Bengals and Locked on Saints. We are a proud part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day, your go-to destinations for everything Bengals and everything Saints in under 30 minutes a day. We appreciate you so much as always for making Locked on Bengals or Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that we're free and available on all podcast apps and on YouTube as well. And today it is Locked on Bengals. It's Locked on Saints. So we've got James Rapine and Jake Lisko at James Rapine at Jake Lisko on Twitter. Your Bengals experts over at Locked on Bengals and myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert. And today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks as they sponsor all of our crossover Thursday content here every week. So make sure you go and check them out. It's so much fun and it's super easy to use. You're not competing with other players. You're not dealing with the spreadsheet wizards. All you have to do is pick against the projections that are already available. And we'll even give you some examples in this episode. You pick two to five players, choose whether or not they're going to score more or less in their prize picks projection. You get those right. And there you go. You can win up to 10 times your entry, and it literally takes you like 60 seconds to make that entry. We love prize picks so much, and we know that you will too. So for the first time users, you're going to be able to receive 100% instant deposit matches up to $100 by using the promo code Locked On. It's prizepicks.com, promo code Locked On. Tell you a little bit more about them later, but James and Jake, we're here to talk biggest stories. We're here to talk key matchups, and of course, make our predictions for the Cincinnati Bengals, New Orleans Saints matchup. Let's start off with the Cincinnati Bengals coming to town here in New Orleans. What's the biggest story for the Cincinnati Bengals team coming into this matchup? Well, to me, it's got to be the fact that they're two and three and they're in danger of falling to two and four and being the the one hit wonder that everyone, especially nationally, thought this team might be following mm. last year's run to Super Bowl 56. And, uh, you know, the the other storyline that I know a lot of Saints fans will be interested in is the return of Jamar Chase to his hometown, Joe Burrow to uh, the home state that, uh, you know, for two years, uh, you know, he, he had you know, an awesome LSU career there. So uh, mm -hmm. those are the two big things. But the fact that, you know, the defending AFC champions are two and three, uh, they've lost three games on, on, you know, end of regulation or end of overtime field goals. They, uh, this is as much of a must win as possible. So I think that leads the way followed by Jamar Chase taking his family out uh, to, uh, to dinner on Saturday night. And I think 15, uh, family members are going to be in attendance as well. So he's uh, he's pretty excited to go back to the Superdome. You mean that's it's not Eli Apple's return? <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought that's where we were going with this one. Eli Apple. The only – wait, there's three ex-Saints playing for the Yeah, Bengals. you got Trey there, Hendrickson and Mon Bell too. There's a revenge game narrative you could talk about too. There's something there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jake, any any other like big stories outside of uh, Eli Apple? <laughs> or well, those kind of the, the big of ones there? That anything mentioned? that would be – more pressing than Eli Apple's return to New Orleans. But <laughs> I, I would say for, for Bengals fans, it's the offense, right? It's can sure. the Bengals offense get a full game going where they don't yeah. disappear for part of the game, the beginning of the game, the middle of the game, whenever it is, can they put together a complete game against a yeah. team that has given up some big passing performances? We're going to talk about some of those matchups, of course, but this is a team that's been stymied by too high, whether it's cover two, whether it's cover six, whether it's quarters at times. Teams are playing them and saying, we dare you to throw it underneath. We dare you to show that you can run the ball and beat us. So far, haven't really seen that. So all eyes for, for folks following the Bengals are certainly on the offense and, and overcoming whatever schematic issues they're having early this year and getting back on track. So I think that's a big one that I'm watching. What about from the Saints end, Ross? 
Yeah, I think that uh, I, there's kind of two big things here. The first of which is health, right? Um, Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Jarvis Landry have quickly gone from being the most highly anticipated you know, three wide receiver set that the New Orleans Saints have ever put on the field to all potentially not playing this weekend. And that happened very quickly. Uh, and it's not been great in terms of what the outlook of that looks like. Chris Olave, though, is deep into concussion protocol already, no lingering sy uh, symptoms, anything like that. So we'll see. But, you know, look, the NFL is probably going to be a little bit cautious right now around the and, and teams will be a little bit cautious around concussions mm -hmm. and how they you know rush or don't rush these guys out on the field. Which quarterback is going to get the play? Is James Rapine going to get to see his favorite quarterback, Jameis Winston, out on the field? Or is it going to be the Andy Dalton revenge? game up against Cincinnati like there's there's that issue but all of that's really going to come down to Jameis Winston's health my money is on more red rifle here for three weeks in a row uh, and then you look at Alvin Kamara who's been wrestling with a rib injury had touched you know had 29 touches in the last game did he pull through okay he was limited uh, on Wednesday in practice we'll see how he progresses throughout the week and many other things including Marshawn Lattimore with a an explosive or a a, a team for potential of an explosive offense particularly in the passing game on the way here uh, in the Cincinnati Bengals. So lots of health question marks up at the top. And I think the other thing both of you have kind of alluded to are these players coming to New Orleans and what's the home crowd going to look like in New Orleans. There's a lot of Cincinnati Bengals fans just 45 miles away from here over, or I guess 80 miles, 45 minutes if you're driving really fast. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No one, that's, that's a joke for like three people who are listening right now from Baton Rouge or many people actually, because it's the Bengals fans. But you know, look, there's, there's, you know, a lot of Bengals fans up there, a lot of LSU fans that can come and make this drive down and come to this game. And we'll see, you know, exactly what the Superdome looks like. Dennis Allen, when we spoke to him on Monday, first thing he said when he opened up his statement to the media was, you know, how much of an impact the Houdat Nation, the Saints fans had on that Seahawks game and how they're going to need it again going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Kind of sounded like a little bit of a plea from the coach for a moment. So we'll <laughs> see, you know, we'll see exactly what that split looks like. But you have them, uh, you know, of course, Jamar Chase, Leo Collins, uh, uh, Joe Burrow, who have all played in LSU amongst, I believe, others. And then there's also, of course, the, the folks that are you have been in Louisiana, as we just mentioned. Not so much Eli Apple, but a lot of people what are going to be interested to see. A lot of people are going to be interested to see Eli Apple. They're not going to be rooting for Eli Apple well, I uh, here in the state of Louisiana. I, I wonder oh. why. I don't uh, understand, yeah. Ross. I need to explain <laughs> this to you. Well, let's just say let's just say Eli Apple had some choice Twitter, some choice Twitter interactions. I know you know, but um, <laughs> and then of course Trey Hendrickson and Von Bell coming back as well. So. I think those guys, uh, I imagine, more well liked, right? Yes, much, much, much more well liked. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. I think everybody's liked outside of, of of Eli Apple. Everybody hates Eli right now. Uh, it's kind it of like that area. Yeah, it's kind of Eli Apple. Some people have like some beef with Akeem Hicks because he growls a little bit too much, and it's weird. Uh, and then there's like the whole Junior Galette situation, but I'm not even gonna say that because he'll 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 call me someday. I don't know. Uh, but like there's, it, it's a whole, he, it's a whole thing with him, but that's really it. You know, Eli Apple's on a real short list of uh, very disliked former New Orleans Saints here in the city of New Orleans. As the, uh, as far as the crowd goes, Burrow mm -hmm. said on Wednesday, he was like, they might've been cheering for us then, but they're going to be rooting against us on Sunday. So he's not expecting many uh, LSU fans to, to be rooting for him because a lot of LSU fans are Saints fans as well. And then Jamar said he expects more of a split. He was like, yeah, they're Saints fans, but they're still LSU fans. So yes. I, I do think that that part, I think Jamar was more accurate there, that we're mm -hmm. going to see a lot of, and we may see a lot of Burrow jerseys mm -hmm. that also boo uh, the Bengals <laughs> and just don't necessarily boo Joe Burrow. Yeah, there I was think a, it's also oh, interesting. The Bengals are using their dome. They're, they put up a, mm. a bubble for the first time. And, and that is a note. The Bengals are going to be practicing in their bubble for the first time this week in preparation for playing in the Dome. Maybe, maybe they're going to blast some noise in there on simulate Friday. Dome noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be smart. That would be smart for sure. Yeah, I, I think that it's one of those things to where like, there's a lot of LSU fans, there's a lot of Saints fans, but they're not always inclusive of one another. And so, you know, we'll see. We'll see exactly how it all how it all wraps up. But, you know, regardless of what the 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 fan base looks like or the audience sounds like within the Superdome, it's going to be the players in the field that either make it happen 
or don't make it happen. The New Orleans Saints having some struggles on the defensive side. The Cincinnati Bengals having some struggles getting going on the offensive side. Which one breaks coming into this game? We're going to discuss that with our key matchups coming up here as we continue on with this crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Bengals and Locked on Saints. Before we get to that, though, I get the great opportunity to tell you about our friends over at Simply Safe. I've shown folks here on the show I use Simply Safe. We have it here and everything. It's awesome and it's super easy to set up. I'm not going to lie, I got the box that had like the full setup with like the glass breaking detectors and the outside alarms and the outdoor camera and all these other things. And I was a little intimidated. I thought it was going to be really hard to set everything up. It took me like 30 minutes. It was super easy. And I'm an idiot. Like I hate putting together furniture that I buy from Ikea. I'm that bad. And Simply Safe was easy for me to put up. So they're awesome. It's really, really cool. Helps you make sure that you're taking care of everything you need to take care of in terms of uh, the security of your family. Uh, 24-7 professional monitoring going on. Uh, Simply Safe agents will call you in a moment's notice if there's a threat or if anything is detected. They can dispatch police and first responders in case of those emergencies, even if you're not home and if you can't be reached, it's that simple. So you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes over at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan. And you can get your first month free as well. Just visit Simply Safe. That's with an I, S I M P L I safe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more because there's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, everybody, we are continuing on with this crossover Thursday edition, Locked on Bengals, Locked on Saints. Appreciate you, as always, for making these shows your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out NFL Key Predictions every single Friday over on the Locked on NFL podcast feed, as well as Locked on NFL YouTube. They give you uh, everything you need to know from the local experts on the five biggest games every single week, including Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football, and all of the betting insight that you need from the uh, industry leader in betting over at Bet Online. You can find it on the Locked On NFL YouTube page, Locked On NFL podcast every single Friday. Guys, we're looking now, Jake and James, Locked On Bengals, Ross Jackson, Locked On Saints, at this big time Cincinnati Bengals, New Orleans Saints matchup. Let's talk about those matchups, the key matchups that are going to make or break this game. Uh, Jake, why don't we start with you on this one? Offense or defense, whichever makes the most sense for you, maybe one from each. What's kind of the key matchup that you think can decide this game and is the big ones you're keeping an eye out on? Is Dennis still running the defense down there in New Orleans? He, he calls the plays, yes. Yeah, so Dennis Allen, Zach Taylor. It's not even, oh, yeah. I mean, yes, to play. For sure. But Zach Taylor has had a hard time, and this offensive staff, because as we've discussed on Locked On Bengals this week, with the outcry from Bengals fans asking for a new play caller, it is a collaborative effort in Cincinnati. I'm not sure how much it would change if Zach wasn't calling the plays, but mm-hmm. they're two out, of th- two out of five this year in getting off to a fast start. They've won two out of five games. The two games they won were games where they scored on their first drive of the game. The other games, they've taken too long to get going. And I, I think that's a big part of it is the team has ideas early in games about things they think will work against these opposing defenses. They run them out there and they're getting behind the chains early and they're not converting drives early. And further, they're just having a hard time finding consistent success, particularly in the ground game against two high coverage structures. And that's why that's so interesting to me is there's a clear blueprint to, to play defense against the Cincinnati Bengals to stay in too high or rotate to too high if you want, but you can just sit in too high pre-snap and then stay in too high and if the Bengals can't run the ball which they haven't been able to do four out of five games this year what are they going to do to you they're going to have to complete you know 13 to 19 play drives to get down into the red area and then they have to not run a Philly special and then they have to not run a shovel pass when they get there to, to convert the drives right and I'm being a little bit harsh on them and I do think that there are some signs that they're figuring some things out but it's just taking them a little bit longer to adapt in these games than they necessarily have time for sometimes. So if they want to be a put foot on throat kind of team Mm -hmm. where they're not scrapping and trying to, you know, win the game on the last possession or need a stop to prevent themselves from losing their fourth game of the year on a last second play, they've lost all three games on plays as time expired on kicks as time expired, which has never happened before. Mm -hmm. Then, I think a lot of it is getting off to a faster start and and finding more consistent success on offense. And some of that is running against two high shelves and other parts of it are 
find ways to get Jamar Chase involved that aren't just along the sidelines. So finding new ways to, to find him over the middle of the field, whether they incorporate more drive, more levels, some of those, you know, attack middle of field, short yep. intermediate concepts. I would love to see more of that from this offense. And on the other side, it's going to be interesting to see how Dennis Allen approaches things because, you know, when we were talking before the show, you didn't tell me that he likes to live in too high, that he likes to play these, you know, cover six, cover two, cover four, and just rotate mm -hmm. through those. And so if there are opportunities for Jamar Chase to get one-on-ones, I think Joe Burrow loves to give his guys opportunities when he isolates and finds those one-on-ones. And so that is just an entire chess match that I think goes a long way in deciding this game. Yeah, I, I got to say real quick, Jake, I think a lot of people sans the player names and then the three games ending on expiring plays where probably a lot of Saints fans were listening to you going, is he talking about the Saints or is he talking about the Bengals? <laughs> which one? Which one is that? Because like a lot of that sounds really familiar. So I, I, I feel you. I feel you uh, on all that. James, what about from your perspective here? Well, I just want to see some points, and I'm sick and tired <laughs> of this offense that has Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase and yeah. Tyler Boyd and whether T. Higgins plays or not. He's going to uh, play. T, T. Higgins. Yeah, we'll see, hopefully, right? <laughs> uh, Joe Mixon. In, in this offense, and the offensive line, by the way, was better last week. It wasn't mm -hmm. like that was the storyline as, as to why they couldn't score. So I'm going to say Joe Burrow and company versus the scoreboard as the matchup. Mm -hmm. Because how many points did the Saints give up last week? Uh, a, good, 32. Uh, a good 32. To, to, to who? To the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, Geno great. Smith. Oh, okay. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I Smith get is the I, best quarterback in the NFL this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, he's been, like he it. has been lights out, but. And I'm not knocking that, but yeah, yeah, are yeah. we serious? <laughs> now let's come back to reality. Geno Smith, keep balling out. That's fine. But Joe Burrow, let's wake up and start putting up some points on the board. And, and so in, in all seriousness, the key matchup to me is Jamar Chase versus these corners because mm -hmm. If they and there was some talk on Wednesday about, you know, just single coverage on Jamar Chase, there isn't mm -hmm. a human on the planet I would put on Jamar Chase one on one and be confident that him that, that he's not going to get open against that person because of the rapport of after everything else, all the talent, the rapport between Burrow and Chase when they're, uh, you know, just one on one. Burrow finds him and, and they find a way to make big plays. I don't think it's going to happen, even though it's happened in the past. I just I don't think so. But if if it does. That's the matchup of the game because the Bengals are going to go to that and continue to go to that because they think that Chase is going to win way more than he's going to lose in those situations. Yeah, that's a great point. And Marshall and Lattimore dealing with an uh, abdominal injury at the moment. So we'll see. I mean, even if Marshall and Lattimore is out there, though, I think you still give him safety help. You have to uh, against Jamar Chase, especially if they are down T. Higgins. You maybe have the resources Agreed. that you can afford to that. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. In that case. So that would be like really, really good to do. But I think you got to find a way to do that no matter who else is on the field. You got you to gotta key in on Jamar. Um, the Saints will play their fair share of cover three in there. But you're right, Jake. They'll do a lot of the sort of split safety looks, cover four, cover two, those even, uh, even backfield uh, splits. But... For me, regardless of what's happening on the back end, which they need to get some stuff fixed on the back end, six plays of 32-plus yards allowed to the Seattle Seahawks last week. Not good. Geno <laughs> Smith. Good. And Kenneth Walker the second, or Kenneth Walker Jr. with a, a, a nice 69-yard run for a touchdown at one point as well. So that's not great. Uh, so Marcus May becomes a, a, a big piece there. You don't want to let Joe Mixon get going because if that happens, then – you lose everything over in the back end as well. So that's why for me, the matchup comes down to the New Orleans Saints defensive line up against the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line. And I, I'm not even going to pick on the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line because again, they weren't the story last week. They've been the story before, but they weren't the story last week. And so how, no matter how you feel about the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line, we've watched the New Orleans Saints rack up 10 sacks so far this season, one in their first two games and then three in the last three. So they've got to be able to be better than that, right? They've got to do that or, or more. They have to exceed sort of their rhythm. Now, Cam Jordan's on his, on, in his bag right now. He's on his streak. And this happens every season to where it either happens early in the season or it happens late in the season. He'll run off seven, eight straight games with a sack. He's got to be that guy again this weekend. Marcus Davenport has to be present again this weekend. Last weekend, he kind of fell off a little bit, though he did get some pressures. The week before that, though, he was uh, against the uh, Minnesota Vikings in London. He was awesome. And so those two guys, pressure up the middle, all the other things. You need to manufacture some pressure with the second level. Fine, do it. You got to be able to take advantage of that. And then, of course, 
Alvin Kamara versus the Cincinnati Bengals middle of the field, whether that be the safeties or, of course, the linebackers. Those, to me, are the things that are going to make or break this game for the New Orleans Saints. If they can't get sacks and if they can't get Alvin Kamara going for a second week in a row, they'll lose. It's that simple. So, to me, that's the big matchup for them. Yeah, Speaking the, of sacks, as far as, by the way, yeah. the Bengals have eight of them. So you're talking, you're talking down on yeah. 10. The Bengals haven't been able to get home with the pass <laughs> Sorry. either. Sorry, Jake. I didn't mean for the stray. I didn't mean for but, the stray. That's my bad. <laughs> but I, I will say that the defense in general, despite not getting home, just plays really disciplined football. And they're just keeping the ball in front of them, keeping teams out of the end zone, preventing first downs. So despite what? the sacks, they, they found a yeah. way. James, you also wanted to get in there with the with the. Well, they've yeah. just been a really good tackling team. So like yeah. the mm-hmm. Taysom Hill aspect of it like I know he has a game like this every once in a while I don't anticipate that happening again and I I think they should be pretty good at at bottling up Avin Kamara on the flip side Ross your key offensive line wise if Jonah's not at 100 percent great point or or if he doesn't play Akeem Adeniji come on down I mean that's that's kind of scary and that kind of opens up the door for uh, the Saints and Davenport to get some get some pass rush yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, of course, you, uh, you're, you're so smart to mention Taysom Hill. Of course, we had four touchdowns last week. I don't expect him to have four touchdowns again ever throughout the rest of the season. But uh, and that's no slight at him. It's just that like that's just one of those games where you pop off against a really bad defense. You know what I mean? But it was interesting to see the way that the New Orleans Saints kind of like punched and counterpunched in terms of the way that they built tendencies, broke tendencies, things like that. So it'll be interesting to see. He'll be a part of the game plan this week, especially if Andy Dalton's under center. He'll absolutely be be a part of the game plan be interested to see what success they find or don't find with them i believe the cincinnati Bengals tweeted out on wednesday that the Bengals defense has not allowed a second half touchdown so far this season playing with fate that is one of those big things and speaking of playing with fate um we (laughs) have uh we we have some projections that we're going to take a look at and some predictions that we're going to get to as well will joe burrow throw for more than 260 and a half yards or less We're all going to answer that and much more as we continue on and wrap up today's crossover Thursday edition of the Locked on Bengals and Locked on Saints podcast. Uh, Before we get to that, though, we're going to tell you about our friends over at Prize picks over at prizepicks.com. Let me get my head up here. Over at prizepicks.com, we're going to be able to take a look at everything going on across the NFL, the MLB, the NHL, all of it, all around there. I think they've even, you're probably going to get pickleball on the way eventually. Like they've got everything that you, you can imagine over there. And basically prize picks is daily fantasy. If you would have asked the world's greatest minds to create daily fantasy for the first time today, this is the way that it should be done. You're not going up against fake lineups and computer generated this, that, and the other, and people that are really good with spreadsheets. None of that. It's just you, your football knowledge, your sports knowledge, College. And that's it. Again, some projections, nice and simple. So you're going to be able to pick whether or not a player goes for more or less passing yards than what their prize picks projections are. We'll give you an example here in just a moment, but it's really, really cool. You pick two to five players, you get those right, you get up to 10 times your entry. And for first time players, all you have to do is head over to prizepicks.com or use the prize picks app. Use the promo code locked on. You're going to get a 100% instant deposit match of up to $100. So you put down $100, they'll match $100. You put down $50, they'll match $50. You know how numbers work. So go and check them out. Promo code locked on over at prizepicks.com or in the prize picks app for that 100 instant deposit match of up to a hundred dollars all right y'all we are wrapping up this crossover thursday episode locked on Bengals, locked on sage jake lisco james rapine ross jackson we are here with you to get you ready you're not going to find a more comprehensive preview than this when it comes to this game for sure so we're excited to bring it to you now we're going to go through predictions guys let's do some score predictions just for funsies how about that we'll get that out of the way and then we'll talk some prize picks projections some individual stuff and then we'll recap the day bet online has the Bengals favored coming to town new orleans saints one point underdogs in this one at home cincinnati Bengals one point favorites uh what are your thoughts on uh the spread how the and the way this game is going to wrap up I was a bit surprised the Bengals are favored, uh, you know, initially just mm, because of the mm. way they're playing. And, you know, whether it's Jameis Winston or Andy Dalton, you know, the Saints put up a ton of points. And I'll tell you this, if they put up 39 this week, I don't think they will <laughs> against the, the Bengals. Right. But if they do, um, I, I certainly think they're going to win because I just I don't believe in this offense right now. I, you know, there's just they're working through so many things. But the last thing I'm going to do, Ross, is bet against Joe Burrow in the Superdome when he was trailing Clemson. And it looked like that, by the way, Trevor Lawrence was undefeated there or or undefeated in college up until that game. I'm not going to bet against Jamar Chase uh, 
in the Superdome. I, I think they do just enough on offense. They don't get to my expectation for this offense, which is 30 points per week, but mm-hmm. they get it done 27-24, and they just happen to cover, even though, again, I'm a bit surprised the Bengals' road favorites in this one, especially because I, I think the Saints have a real home field advantage there in the Superdome. Yeah. Jake, what about you? I don't do score predictions to the That's chagrin okay. of all of our listeners, but <laughs> I, I do think that I, I do on, think take that a risk, this, this could be a weird game. Yeah, with with teams that don't play each other very often, with a clear blueprint out there that that teams can use against the Bengals and and a defense that hasn't necessarily done it. We were talking before the show. How are they going to treat Jamar Chase? And, and I think there's also just a lot up in the air as we record this. The status of the Saints receivers, yep. the status of T. Higgins, the status of Jonah Williams, the Bengals starting left tackle. These are all very important things. If T. Higgins doesn't play, which we talked about earlier in the show, mm-hmm. then the Bengals' efforts to find offense are that much more constrained because they can't punish teams as easily for devoting extra resources to Jamar Chase. So when I'm looking ahead at this game, I'm just like, there, there's just so many factors right now, so many chips that need to fall before I feel like I really have a good idea of what way this game is going to go, it's really challenging at this point. And I could definitely see it being tight. The Andy Dalton revenge factor. We haven't really talked about that either. He's had his opportunities against his former team. And so here's he's two and oh against the Bengals. Two and oh against them. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's the thing, right? It's like, Andy he's going to fall to two and one. He's going to, he's going to try to win a 20 <laughs> to 19 game here, man. Andy Dalton. <laughs> If 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 the Bengals fall to two and four, I mean this is as much of a must win yes. as they've. You just if you fall into two and four is just so tough to to dig out of, and they've put themselves yeah. in holes and tough positions before. But I just, you know, they, they better find a way to get this one. Yeah, got to be that right Ross? week. Yeah, I, I've been, I've been, I've been kind of like vacillating on this. Like, I don't know. I, I, I haven't been totally sure about where I was going to go with it. And I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go with it during, during the show. And the more that we've talked about it, the more concerned I am around the New Orleans Saints. And one of the things that I'm watching here is that Cincinnati Bengals right now, according to Marcus Mosher from over at, at, at Locked On Cowboys, according to his, his tracking, the Cincinnati Bengals are second second from the bottom, right? Second to last in the NFL when it comes to explosive plays generated so far this season. The New Orleans Saints gave up six them things last week in in very poor fashion and in really bad taste. And we saw this with the Cincinnati Bank. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. With the Carolina Panthers earlier uh, this year. Carolina Panthers had lost nine straight. So what happened when they played against the New Orleans Saints? Yeah. Uh, the Carolina Panthers hadn't generated a turnover. Uh, so far the season until they had played against the New Orleans Saints. Guess what they did against the New Orleans Saints? Yeah. So we've heard these stories before. Ah, this team hasn't been able to do this. This team hasn't been able to do that. Then they need a get right game and they tend to find one against the New Orleans Saints. We've seen it already so far this season. I have a really hard time picking against the Cincinnati Bengals offense. And I know that there's like the Super Bowl hangover conversations and blah, 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 blah. But on a week to week basis, is this team good or is this team not good? That team is good. And their defense is good too. So I'm a little bit worried about the New Orleans Saints going into this one. So I am also taking the Cincinnati Bengals to win this game. I, much like you, I was really close to your score prediction, James. I'm going 24 21. Uh, but same idea, right? Like it, it, it's a tight game. It might even come down to the Cincinnati Bengals actually winning on a last second field goal to change their fates for, for, you know, in terms of what they've, they've had so far this season. So that's, that's kind of where I am right now. I will probably fluctuate a little bit throughout the week. Once I learn whether or not Michael Thomas is healthy, once we know if he's going to play, once we know if Jarvis Landry is going to play. But as of right now, the outlook is that guys like Michael Thomas, Jarvis Landry, Chris Olave, Marshawn Lattimore, that they're not going to be out on the field, at least as of right now, right? All of them are DNP so far throughout the week. So we'll have to see what happens Thursday, later on today, and then Friday. So hard for me to pick the Saints with that in mind. But if they're healthy, then I think that maybe you could flip it to where the Saints won 24-21, but I think it's going to be that kind of a score. Especially if, if those guys are healthy that you just mentioned and Jonah Williams can't play. And yeah, can't play. yeah, great point. Th- great then, point. then you just flip it, and it's, it's really tough. So, yep. Saints fans, don't crush me. I, I said it all confident. I'm not confident in anything this Bengals team is doing offensively. I just I look at their talent, and like you said, Ross, it's like, are they really going to drop to two and four? Right. Like, is that really what, you know, you know, and I, I guess, you know, depending on who they were playing, I might feel differently, but I just, I don't know if Andy Dalton, if, if he goes to three and O against the Bengals as a starter, <laughs> ooh, just wild. <laughs> and he would be two and O against, uh, 
against Burrow, which would be. Oh, too. that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe the revenge game factor works more for the New Orleans Saints than against the Saints this week, but that hasn't usually been the case. We'll see how it goes. All right. We'll go quick on these more or less on these prize picks projections. Joe Burrow, 260.5 passing yards, more or less, guys. Today, I say more because I think T. Higgins might play. I think that there, he's going to get right at some point this year. He hasn't mm-hmm. been right. If those one-on-one opportunities are there, then it's an easy more. But we'll, we'll see what happens in this game. Last week, the Ravens just lived in too high. He was under 200. Previous weeks, when he had opportunities against single high coverage shells, easily over yeah. this mark. So, or going higher than this mark. So I, I would take more on, on the speculation that T. Higgins plays and those one-on-one opportunities are there. Great. James? Yeah, I, I would say more. And that doesn't necessarily mean it'll translate to a win, but I just... In the Dome, I think he's going to find a way to, to top that mark. Yeah, I'm going to go more as well. Saints have been giving up explosive plays left and right over the course of the past couple of weeks. They're not one of the ones at the top when it comes to the full season outlook, but last three games, you're looking at the trends, you're looking at injuries on the defensive side, stuff like that. I think more than 260 and a half. And then over on the uh, New Orleans Saints side, they have Alvin Kamara, 63.5 rushing yards, more or less when it comes to the New Orleans Saints running back. I'll take more Wait. because I, I, I think whole. He'll do. He'll, he'll get enough touches to to where yeah. he'll be able to get that. Even if the Bengals do a good job of containing him, he's going to have, you know, a 15 yard run, or a, he's good enough to have a 12 yard run. And then you mix in a bunch mm-hmm. of threes and fours. So that's the bad end if things go well for the Bengals. And then obviously he's capable of, you know, doubling that with ease. So I, I think he'll top that mark. I'll go less. I think the mm-hmm. Bengals' run defense, even without, well, without DJ Reader, it has not been nearly as good. To be mm-hmm. entirely frank, they could not stop the Ravens running game last week, and the Ravens just chose to not run the ball as much as they could have, I thought. But that being said, it's just a limited offense if Andy Dalton is the quarterback and if those receivers aren't playing. And if that's the case, the Bengals can devote more resources to the run, and, and that is the world I'm imagining where it mm-hmm. goes less. So that's where I'm at. How about you, Russ? That's a good point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go more, but it's not, it's not much more. I think it's like 65, 70 yards on the ground. I think he gets the majority of his production, 80 or so yards receiving in this yeah. one, especially if those other wide receivers are out, right? They're going to lean on him so much in the, in the passing game that he might break off you know, one or two of the big enough runs to kind of swell his rushing numbers a little bit, but not too much. But I do think he's over 150 scrimmage yards in this one, strictly based off of the number of touches he has and the necessity that the New Orleans Saints will, will have in terms of his production. So guys, a quick recap for the day, just looking at the biggest story for the Cincinnati Bengals. James, you spoke a little bit about the uh, offense for this one and your concerns around them. Yeah, I mean, this offense has struggled. They're averaging 21.6 points per game, which is about five less than last year. And this offense was supposed to be better than last year. So they need to find a way uh, to start scoring and, and scoring early in games and, and be consistent. And they haven't been. They've, they've, con- at, they've been consistent, actually, at not beating cover two. So mm. they need to find a way to do that and, and to, to put together some big plays. And if they can't do that, work the intermediate part of the field, which is something that uh, they haven't been able to do as, as consistently uh, either. So uh, one name I'll mention, by the way, Tyler Boyd. We haven't talked yeah. about him much. Oh, yeah. I think he could play a factor in this game as well and in, in getting Joe Burrow into a rhythm early. But, yeah, the biggest storyline to me is are the defending AFC champs going to fall to two and four? I mean, they're in danger and they're uh, on shaky ground right now, so they need to find a way to get a win. And Jake, in order for them to get that offense going, they're going to have to win your key matchup, which was looking at the play callers. Yeah, I think that just having answers and finding consistent success and staying patient when defenses are playing 15 yards off the ball a half second after the snap is is an important thing for this offense to overcome, to find those shutdowns, to find that success in the running game where yeah, you're in shotgun, you're handing the ball off, and the linebackers and safeties are still backpedaling at the snap because they don't believe you're going to run the ball. And even when that happens, you're only getting two yards of carry at times Mm. this year. So finding ways to take advantage of those light boxes when teams are playing too high against them and then punishing teams when they get out of it to answer that is just a complimentary offense kind of thing that we have to see from this team to really get things going and try to unlock the whole field. And like James said, finding ways to utilize the middle of the field has been a challenge so far especially in the intermediate part of the field, a place where Joe Burrow has been excellent. 
really for his entire career as a starter until this year. So unlocking those things, I think, very important. Yeah, and, and, and right along with that, the matchup that I'm going to be watching, the defensive line of the New Orleans Saints up against the offensive line of the Cincinnati Bengals with all of the health concerns, which are the biggest story for the New Orleans Saints very likely coming into this one. You're going to need to kind of take things back to the fundamentals, win with a run game and win with pressure on the quarterback. And all of that ties into exactly what we've discussed in terms of our predictions for this game as a game that can be close and kind of go either way. And it's certainly going to be very, very weird going into this one for sure. Guys, absolute pleasure running through this New Orleans State Cincinnati Bengals matchup with the both of you. You can find more from James at James Rapine on Twitter. You can find more from Jake at Jake Liscow on Twitter, myself at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter. And of course, at each of our shows, the Locked on Bengals podcast every Monday through Friday, they're going to be breaking down this matchup even further on their Friday episode. I'll be doing the same over at Locked on Saints from the New Orleans Saints perspective over at Locked on Saints. We appreciate you making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, make sure you go and check out the Peacock and Williamson NFL show, former NFL scout Matt Williamson, NFL analyst Brian Peacock, bringing you everything you need to know around the NFL in around 30 minutes. We appreciate you so much for making us a part of your day and making us your first listen of the day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.